In this video, we are going to be solving for missing angles of a right triangle. So the first thing that I want to do on my calculator is I want to make sure that my mode is in degrees. You must be in degrees anytime we are doing our trick. So I'm going to click on mode. I'm going to make sure I'm on degrees and I'm not. So to change it, you go down and you select over to degrees. You press enter and then second quit. Then you're back at home screen. Now, for all of our solving our angles, I have three examples here with sine, cosine, and tangent. We are going to be using our inverse trig functions on our calculator, these yellow buttons right up here. So we're going to be pressing the second button a lot. So what I have here first is sine of x is equal to 0.0872. I'm going to be solving for angle x. That's what I want to solve. And the ratio for opposite over hypotenuse, instead of giving the actual fraction, it's giving me the, the value of that ratio in a decimal form. And so what I'm going to end up doing is inputting that ratio 0 0.0872 into my calculator with the inverse sine function because that the inverse just like you take the square root of a number that you that is being squared and you want to find out what the original number is you are going to do the inverse sine of the ratio so I'm just going to show you these three and then maybe it'll make more sense as we continue going on so I'm going to press second sign because it's inverse sign because I'm finding an angle anytime we're ever finding an angle you're always going to use inverse and that's what the inverse function looks like and then I'm going to put in this ratio I get that I'm going to round to three decimal places and there you go and then the next one, it's going to be its cosine. So in order to find the angle, I'm going to have to do inverse cosine. And I need to put in the ratio, 0 0.0698. So that is that would be the adjacent over the hypotenuse if it was in a fraction form. And so there I go, I get that angle measurement for my angle X. Now granted, yes, all of them say X, but they're not the same X. They're part of a different triangle. I probably should have used different variables instead of using the same variable for each one. But X, once again, is just our angle measurement. It's our theta. So let's look at the third one, second tangent. I'm going to put point two. Two three oh nine, and there I go. So I have showed you three different examples using the inverse sine, cosine, and tangent to get an angle measurement when you are given the actual radio, radio, um, ratio, and it is in decimal form. Okay, let's move on. So I have an example here. We want to solve for our question mark our angle question mark here. So this angle. So first thing I want to do is I want to identify what I have. My 34 would be my opposite side and my 57 is my hypotenuse. So soka toa. So which trig function has the O and the H? That is sine. So sine of theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So I'm going to substitute in the values that I have. I know my O and my H. I do not know theta. That is what I'm solving for. So sine of theta is equal to 34 over 57. This should look familiar. You should already know how to do this. We've been doing this for a couple of days with our trig ratios. So here we are. Sine theta equals 34 over 57. Now how do we solve that for our theta? Well, we have to use our inverse. So we have to use inverse sine. And we are going to be substituting in that ratio, so 34 over 57. So now we have a fraction instead of a decimal. And that is exactly what we're going to input into our calculator. So it's going to look like that. And so our answer is 36.619 if we we're rounding to three decimal places. And it's in degrees. So make sure you put the degree symbol. That is our unit. Next one. 
we have solving for our question mark. We have our three, which is the opposite. We have the eight, which is adjacent. Well, so katoa. So the trig function that is O and A is tangent. So tangent theta is equal to O over A. I'm going to substitute in the numbers that I have. I have three and I have eight. So I'm going to substitute those for the opposite and then the adjacent. Once again, this should look familiar. This is our trig ratios. This is what we've been doing. But now we're not going to stop here. We're going to continue. We're going to solve for our actual angle. To do that, we have to use the inverse tangent now. So inverse tangent, and we're going to put in our ratio 3 over 8. So this is exactly what we're going to input into our calculator. Inverse tangent of 3 over 8, and then that's what we get for our angle measurement. So 20.556. So the let's kind of recap. You identify what you have. We have the opposite and we have the adjacent in this case. And you substitute it into our trig ratio. You should know how, that's step number one. You, should, you need to, well, there's actually two steps here. You need to be able to identify the opposite and the adjacent and the hypotenuse. You need to know that. Then you need to be able to set up the ratio. That's the second step. Once you get there, then these angles are become very simple because all you do is just do the inverse of that trig function. All right. So now let's do another example. We have 19, which is adjacent. We have 45, which is the hypotenuse. The trig function so katoa. So the trig function with a and h is cosine. So cosine theta equals a over h. I'm going to substitute in what I have, 19 and 45. So cosine theta is equal to 19 over 45. That is our trig ratio. Once again, you should be able to know how to do this. We've been practicing this. Then to solve this for theta, you have to do the inverse cosine function and then input in your ratio in parentheses. Make sure you do put it in parentheses. So this is exactly how you would enter it into the calculator and then this is what you get for your angle measurement. All right, what if you have all three sides? What do you do? It's so katoa. Well, first I'm going to identify my opposite adjacent and my hypotenuse. So my opposite would be 57, my adjacent would be 76, and my hypotenuse would be 95. Since I have all three sides, I could use cosine, I could use tangent, I could use sine. And so I'm going to show you that I could use all three of them, and I'm going to get the same answer. I should get the same answer because I'm solving for the same angle on the same triangle. So let's look at cosine. Adjacent and hypotenuse, so A and H. So my ratio for that one would be 76 over 95. So I do the inverse cosine here of 76 over 95, and this is what I get for my angle measurement. Now let's look at tangent. It's O over A, so 57 over 76. I gotta do the inverse tangent of that. 57 over 76, the inverse tangent. So theta is gonna be 36.870 degrees, just like I got for my cosine. Once again, they should be all be the same because we're solving for the exact same angle measurement. If they are not the same, then that means you did something wrong. All right, so let's look at our last one, sine of theta. Opposite over hypotenuse, O over H, so 57 over 95. That would be our ratio. So in order to solve for it, you got to use the inverse sine. Inverse sine of 57 over 95. And once again, we get our angle measurement to be 36.870 degrees. And to prove it, I showed it in the calculator, and that is how you would do it. So you do not, for these, you do not have to show all three. I'm just showing you all three to show you that they would all be the same. So you just pick one. You pick your favorite. Do you like sine, cosine, or tangent? So just pick one when you're given all three.